Well, hey guys, over the past week, I've gotten an increasing number of comments asking me to make a video on the association between sunscreen use and hair loss. So that is what I'm gonna cover in this video. If you're new here, welcome, my name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. And in this video, we're gonna be going over the research suggesting an association between sunscreen use and a certain type of hair loss. And I'm gonna be explaining why you should not chuck out your sunscreen out of fear that it's going to cause hair loss, why it's too premature to jump to that conclusion. What the heck am I even talking about? Well, there are some studies that show an association between sunscreen use and a specific type of hair loss called frontal fibrosing alopecia. What the heck is frontal fibrosing alopecia? Frontal fibrosing alopecia is a type of hair loss that is progressive and scarring. It affects the frontotemporal hairline, and in some cases it can involve the eyebrows and the eyelashes. We don't know why it happens. It's more often seen in postmenopausal or perimenopausal women, but of course it can affect both men and women. Increasingly, research has suggested that there are some genes that predispose people to develop this, and we think maybe hormones may play a role, and of course there is interest in identifying if there are any environmental triggers, hence leading researchers to investigate if there is any potential association between topical skincare products and cosmetics with frontal fibrosing alopecia. Now, to be clear, frontal fibrosing alopecia is one type of hair loss. There are so many out there, so we are only talking about one type of hair loss and it's not even the most common type of hair loss. So bear that in mind. As it stands now, the research that we have that suggests a potential association but does not prove an association is based on case-controlled questionnaire studies. And I'll get into the limitations of jumping to conclusions based on these types of studies later in the video. The first study just surveyed women, 105 women with frontal fibrosing alopecia versus 100 women without it. And they asked them a bunch of questions about their lifestyle, and different skincare habits. And in that study, there was a higher rate of using sunscreen twice weekly in the group that has frontal fibrosing alopecia as compared to the control group without. There was no statistical significant association with any type of other skincare product in that study, like moisturizers, toners, cosmetics. This study was heavily criticized because these types of studies have numerous methodologic issues. First of all, you have recall bias and you have issues with determining a temporal association. Did they, when exactly did they start using sunscreen? Was it before or after their diagnosis? And what type of sunscreen, chemical, mineral, these things were not teased out in the study. A follow-up study was done by the same group later on and showed similarly an association between frontal fibrosing alopecia and sunscreen use. But this follow-up study was in men. So 17 men with frontal fibrosing alopecia versus 73 controls. In this study, there was also an association with using a moisturizer with sunscreen or a moisturizer in general. Um, there was no significant difference in the use of hair care or other facial care products in this study, which is important and I'll touch on why that is important later on. A multi-center study was done in Spain looking at different, basically different clinics that treat hair loss and they looked at 308, pa they surveyed 308 patients with frontal fibrosing alopecia versus 347 controls without and again showed a higher rate of daily sunscreen use in the group with frontal fibrosing alopecia versus the control group. And the fourth survey-based study was done in Australia and showed a higher rate of sunscreen use in those with frontal fibrosing alopecia in comparison to those with another type of hair loss, androgenetic alopecia. To be very critical when it comes to any type of study, but especially these survey-based observational studies, because they're not able to tease out any sort of temporal association and they are subject to a lot of heavy, heavy bias. I mean, people who have this diagnosis have this diagnosis because they saw a dermatologist and were given the diagnosis. And guess what's more likely when you see a dermatologist? You're more likely to be counseled to use sunscreen. So you're more likely to be using sunscreen. So is this really a true causative, you know, is this truly causative? 
if even associated. It could be that the people they are serving, it is a selection bias here, not to mention recall bias. As I mentioned earlier, a tendency to recall things because you have a certain diagnosis. And there is a lot of information out there that people are accessing on the internet. When people deal with hair loss, it's very distressing. And the first thing many people do is go to the internet these days and start searching. They run into forums, information, and along the way, maybe they are more likely to see ads for sunscreen, who knows? And it's important to note that there is no association in any of these studies with using sunscreen to the body and any type of hair loss. There is one case report of a woman who had frontal fibrosing alopecia, had been trying all sorts of treatments prescribed to her by her dermatologist for I think two years, no success, was told to just stop using sunscreen. And then six months later, her hair came back. Now, whether or not she was ever really using sunscreen before and to how, you know, how often, how compliant she ever was, that was not actually clarified in this case report, but she did have improvement in her hair loss. And in the case of sunscreen, you can imagine the potential negative health repercussions of sunscreen avoidance. The Overwhelming literature supports the use of sunscreens as a safe method to reduce the burden of sun damage. Now, to stay safe in the sun, it is recommended that you stay in the shade when you are outdoors, that you rely on sun protective clothing, wear a hat, wear sunglasses, and wear sunscreen SPF 30 or higher to all sun exposed surfaces. That is the sun protective package. So telling people to avoid sunscreen based on this is premature and can potentially be harmful to the public as a whole. Based on the current data, there is not sufficient evidence to establish any causal role of sunscreen use with frontal fibrosing alopecia. Not to mention what ingredient. There are different types of sunscreens, chemical sunscreens and mineral sunscreens and hybrid sunscreens that have both active ingredients. Not to mention there are different vehicles that sunscreens are in, creams, lotions, foams, sprays. What type of vehicle were they using? One one sunscreen ingredient that people became interested in is titanium dioxide. There was a study that showed that titanium dioxide does get into the hair follicle and is detectable there. But here's the thing, titanium dioxide is, detect is detectable in the hair follicles of people with frontal fibrosing alopecia and people without it. So you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really prove anything at all. Then there's this idea that certain ingredients in chemical sunscreens like oxybenzone, maybe this is triggering some kind of photoallergic or photo irritant effect leading to the hair loss. But that actually has not been substantiated either on photo patch testing, which is how we determine if there is a photo allergy. So at this point, it is premature to draw, try and draw any conclusions about an association with sunscreen use and frontal fibrosing alopecia based on the weaknesses of the current literature. And the repercussions of making this kind of recommendation, you can seriously lead to harm given that sunscreens are an important aspect of sun protection, minimizing the damage to the skin that sets you up for skin cancers later on in life. I'm gonna put in the description box, obviously the references to these questionnaire studies, but also a reference to a recent review published in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology, which points out all the weaknesses that I've mentioned here with the studies and recommends against drawing premature conclusions based on these and continues to recommend that we be very cautious with interpreting this and not you know, draw premature conclusions that could harm patients down the road. So I'm gonna link that down below in the description box. The authors are highly well regarded within the uh, realm of photo protection and, and sunscreens. Uh, here are some reasons why I don't think sunscreen is responsible for hair loss. Number one, the overall incidence of frontal fibrosing alopecia is pretty low in comparison to the overall incidence of sunscreen use. I mean, while people don't like to wear sunscreen, there are a lot more people out there putting sunscreen on than there are people with this type of hair loss. It would, you know, you would think that if this was causative, then everybody would have this type of hair loss, but it's not that common. Number two, not all patients with frontal fibrosing alopecia endorse using sunscreen. Now, that with the caveat that they may not realize they are coming in contact with sunscreen ingredients because sunscreen ingredients are present in other things like hair dyes and shampoos. But still, there are a lot of patients who do not wear sunscreen and do have this type of hair loss. Number three reason I don't think that this is 
likely is that there's no association with sunscreen use on the body and hair loss. You would think that if it's sunscreen triggering hair loss, this type of hair loss that you might have you know, uh, variants of it on the body. Number three, there's no association with using sunscreen to the body and hair loss. There's no association with using sunscreen and hair loss on other parts of the face, like the beard or the mustache. The fourth reason is that in these studies, there was no association with using hair dyes or frequent shampooing and frontal fibrosing alopecia. And the reason that's important is that many, is that hair dyes and many shampoos have sunscreen ingredients in them, not to protect the skin from sun damage, but to uh, protect some of the ingredients, to allow for the color to last longer. In trying to understand this disease further, it's definitely worthwhile for researchers to look at potential environmental triggers. But the research suggesting that sunscreen use is an environmental trigger for frontal fibrosing alopecia is solely based on these questionnaire studies, which are incredibly weak and subject to numerous limitations and not the quality necessary to draw meaningful conclusions. Recall bias, temporal ambiguity, and selection bias. We can't even say for sure that there is a correlation between sunscreen use and frontal fibrosing alopecia. But even if we could say that, remember, correlation does not equal causation. People who use sunscreen may be more likely to have other behaviors that necessitate wearing sunscreen that are expo you know that are more relevant environmental exposures. For example, maybe you wear sunscreen because you spend more time outdoors and maybe because you are outdoors you are exposed to more pollutants and maybe it is the pollution in the air. I mean, you could start going down a maybe it's this, maybe it's that. So we need high quality research studies to tease out environmental triggers that may play a causative role in this type of hair loss. It's likely going to be the type of thing too where you have it, maybe a genetic predisposition. So there's a test for genetic marker. And if you have that, then you know maybe there's an environmental exposure that combines with your underlying background and boom, kicks off the frontal fibrosing alopecia. So it's not simply as straightforward as this plus this equals hair loss. And also the more common types of hair loss that people deal with, you know, there's no research to support that sunscreen causes those. So be very careful, you know, people on the internet just say hair loss, but if they're not specifying the type, you can't, you know, jump to conclusions either. There are a lot of types of hair loss out there. To be clear, in my opinion, it is premature to draw any type of conclusions from these very weak studies. And you should continue wearing sunscreen, wearing a broad brimmed hat, protecting your skin from the sun by staying in the shade and wearing sun protective clothing and continuing to wear a broad spectrum SPF 30 or higher sunscreen to sun exposed areas. All right, y'all, I hope that helped clarify these questions you had about any potential association with sunscreen use and hair loss. And on the end slate, I'm going to put my video on hair loss treatments that work. So if you are dealing with hair loss, definitely check that video out. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.